Hello guys, uh, welcome to this video where we are going to be coding out this retrieval pipeline right here. Okay, so in the previous section we saw how we can implement the uh, ingestion pipeline and we did successfully implement it as well. So if you remember, we actually loaded all of the documents and then we split it and then we stored it in the vector store. Okay, so uh, all of the embeddings live in this particular directory right here. So right now we are going to go ahead and implement the retrieval pipeline. So uh, to give you a quick refresher, so we have the user query, we're embedding that, and then we are going ahead and creating a component called retriever. And this retriever is going to go and find similar chunks that match this particular original user queries embedding. And it is going to use an algorithm called cosine similarity. Okay, so don't get confused. This is something that we will cover in the next video, but it is going to find the most similar, you know, cosine similarity scores are highest. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and shortlist those first five or 10 or whatever it is that we uh, specify. It's going to uh, shortlist those first five chunks and then we are going to get it. And finally, we are going to take the query as well as the original chunk uh, English passages and then we are going to send it to the LLM. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So right here, you can see I've already gone ahead and created uh, a, a file called retrieval pipeline and you can see this is all the code there is okay so these are all some synthetic questions that we are going to be testing the system on but uh, actually the code is going to be very minimal okay so this is all the code so as you can see we have imported uh, the chroma db uh, and the embedding model okay so we have openai embeddings which we imported and then we are loading up the environment variables because we have the openai key right here okay and then uh, this is going to be the persistent directory Right? So this is where our embeddings live. We would want access to this particular you know, data inside of this particular file. And also I'm initializing the embedding model. Right? We are also note guys that I'm going to be using the same model right here that I have used here. Okay, so we cannot use something different or we cannot change the dimensions. All right, so the next thing is that I'm going to recreate the vector store. Okay, so if you remember in the previous file, we uh, created all this data, right? So I'm just pointing the, the new vector store to this particular data. So we're just basically recreating it. So I'm providing the persistent directory and then I'm providing the embedding model. And then I am specifying uh, which algorithm we are going to be using uh, or which algorithm that this retriever needs to use in order to do the matching. In this case, okay, al always remember whenever you're dealing with rags, always use cosine similarity okay so uh, why we'll uh, we'll talk about that in depth in the next video but we are going to always use cosine similarity right here and this is what this particular line means all right so we have the instance of the db right here and now we can use this db and then create the retriever component so i'm just going to say okay db as retriever and i'm going to set the k value to three so what this means is that this uh, retriever, so this retriever is going to retrieve the top three chunks with the highest similarity scores to the user's uh, query embedding. Okay, so uh, that is exactly what we are mentioning right here. So we can also configure the retriever in a slightly different way as well. Okay, so what we are doing here is going to be slightly different. So uh, we still have the, the number of chunks k to be five or three or whatever, but we are also setting a score threshold, okay, to be 0 0.3. So this is something that we will cover uh, soon, uh, exactly what it means, but uh, on a very high level, you can think of the scores, okay? So I told you the cosine similarity scores that gets calculated, right, for every single chunk. So those scores range from zero to one. So zero, if we call it as zero, it means that, you know, there is nothing similar there, don't even, uh, bother to shortlist it if it is one it means it's a strong match it's like an equal match so <laughs> we're just saying if the score threshold it needs to be at least 0 0.3 only then you can shortlist a particular chunk so if we set it to be very high uh, it is very likely that you might not get any chunks at all so this is something that uh, we will have to arrive at through trial and error but for now to keep it very simple i'm just going to use uh, this particular line right here and then finally we are going to say retriever.invoke and then pass in the user query. Okay, so let's look at the user query. So uh, which island does SpaceX lease for its launches in the Pacific? Okay, so this is something that you can imagine the Wikipedia page of SpaceX is going to have the data. Okay, we don't know where it is going to be. We cannot possibly go through every single line and find out. That is why we are using rags. So 
we are going to invoke the retriever okay so this is going to be like a keyword that you will come across a lot so whenever you have a component like this or whenever you have a, a, a chart model instance you always uh, you know call it by saying invoke so retriever uh, dot invoke and we're passing this particular user query and this should give you the top five chunks all right guys so it is time to finally run this file and check if the retriever actually does a good job if it can actually retrieve relevant chunks from the vector database so uh, also note that i've increased uh, the number of chunks retrieved to, uh, from three to five so let us go ahead and run it so the query is in what year did tesla begin production of the roadster so if i run it okay so there's a couple of things happening right so the users this thing was user question was getting converted to embedding and then the retriever goes off and fetches the top five chunks so right here you can actually see uh, document four document five document three so these are all the chunks document two and document one and finally we have the user query so let us see if the chunks actually have the answer to the user's question so uh, in what year did tesla begin production of the roadster tesla began production of the roadster in 2008 it it has the answer right so let's look at the second document uh, the original tesla roadster was a two-seater sports car evolved from lotus this thing okay it was produced from 2008 so this also has the answer it started from 2008 and then let's look at the third document. Okay, so the third third document also talks about the Roadster. The fourth document also talks about the first Tesla Roadster, right? It does not have the answer, but uh, still the retriever fetched it because it is somewhat similar to the user's question. And then document five. Okay, so this also talks about Roadster and uh, you know this also has information. Maybe it does not have the exact information or the exact answer for this user question, but still the retriever fetched it because it thought that okay this could be somewhat similar okay this could have the answer but you can see the first three or two documents actually has the answer to the user's question and one more thing guys all these different documents that have been fetched th this is not being generated by llm there is no llm involved here it is pure embeddings and uh, similarity matching so if you uh, if you actually like you know go ahead search for this in the tesla.txt Right. Okay. So you can actually see Tesla began production of the Roadster. Tesla began production of the Roadster. Right. So this entire thing, apparently this entire thing was one chunk. Okay. So this entire thing was one chunk. And then this particular chunk was retrieved as the first document. This is pretty powerful if you think about it. Okay. And usually when I'm building out these very uh, simple prototypes, what I tend to do is to check if the chunks that are retrieved are good quality, if it answers the user's question to check it. What I do is I don't go through every single chunk and test it, okay, to tweak the rack system. Instead, what I do is I just copy uh, this entire thing and then I ask chart CPT or Claude, okay, I tell it, okay, I'm testing a rack system. This is the user's query. These are the context. Just tell me if the rack system is good, if it's working good. So uh, this is the prompt right here. I'm just saying, okay, I'm testing my rack system. I'll give you the following information, the user query and the context. I want you to tell me if the context is good and has the answer to the user's question in one or two lines. If you understand this, just say okay. So let's go ahead and paste this and let's see what Claude has to say. The context is excellent and directly answers the question, right? Document one explicitly states Tesla began production of the Roadster in 2008. So let me go ahead and try out a different question of a different company, right? So I'm going to say what was Nvidia's first graphics accelerator called? So let's replace this query right here and let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we've got again, uh, we've got, you know, document one and right here, uh, I'm not really sure, I'm not really able to, uh, because there's a lot of information, so I'm a little lazy, so I'm going to make the use of Claude to tell me if the user query is actually, I mean, if the context retrieved are actually high quality. So I'm going to post it right here okay so you can see we've got the user query and we've got the entire context here as well with document one document two document three okay so again the context is excellent and directly answers the question document one clearly states nvidia's first graphics accelerator the nv1 right so that is exactly what the first context here talks about as well right i have also got a lot more questions for you guys to test it out okay so these are called synthetic questions and uh, you can test it out uh, by yourself. Uh, all this code is already available in the repository. Okay, so I can test it with, okay, how much Microsoft pay to acquire GitHub. So let's replace this query right here and let's try to test this out again. 
All right, so we've got five different chunks coming all the way up. You can see, you know, it's got something about GitHub acquisition on January, right? Okay, this actually has the question. I don't even have to go ask Claude because I already see the answer right here. All right, guys, so that is it for the retrieval pipeline. But in the next video, we are going to dive deep into, you know, how exactly does this similarity matching happen? It's called cosine similarity formula. And that is exactly what we're going to be diving deep into in the next video. So I'll see you there.